Is the motion seconded? The member for Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to speak in support of the defence. Is the motion seconded? Oh, yes, it is. Uh, thanks, the member for Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to speak in support of the defence Honour General Sir John Monash Amendment Bill 2018, and I thank the member for Indi for bringing this bill to the House and inviting me to second it. Despite all his accomplishments during his service, Monash, as the member for Indi said, received no Australian awards or honours following the 11th of November 1918 a centenary which we commemorate in a few weeks' time. Now, we all know that former Deputy Prime Minister, the Hon. Tim Fisher, is determined to ensure that Sir John Monash's amazing contribution to end World War I is recognised by posthumously elevating him to the rank of Field Marshal. But it's not just Tim Fisher. If you have not already done so, I encourage everyone to read Professor Roland Perry's book, Monash and Chevelle, how Australia's two greatest generals changed the course of world history. Professor Perry is well known for his meticulous research and this outstanding book provides compelling evidence as to why Monash is deserving of this long overdue promotion, detailing his groundbreaking military achievements, tactical nous and care for the welfare of his troops. If Monash's contribution is considered significant enough to name the Reception and Reflective Centre at our National Memorial at Villers Bretonneux after him. Why do we continue to deny him this personal recognition? An engineer by training and committed Army reservist, Monash rose to the rank of general and became arguably the most outstanding Allied commander in the whole of the First World War. Monash orchestrated all the elements of his forces to win battles quickly and avoid the hideous stalemate of trench warfare. Some say that Monash was discriminated against because he was a Jew with German heritage and emerging as a reservist. In his autobiography, the then Minister for Defence, Sir George Pearce, my great-grandfather, says, quote, I was subjected to some very bitter criticism on the question of the appointment of Lieutenant Colonel John Monash as an officer of the AIF. I was quite satisfied that Monash was loyal. Monash had been for many years an enthusiastic officer in the militia forces. He first came under my notice when the Intelligent Corps was formed. Monash made his name as one of the greatest soldiers with the Allied forces. If I had listened to gossip and slander, as I was urged to do, Monash would never have gone to the war. Mr Speaker, this bill is very carefully drafted with safeguard clauses. Bestowing the rank of Field Marshal posthumously on Monash recognises a career emblazoned with achievement, but also an outstanding contribution before, during and post World War I. Field Marshal Montgomery, the famous British Army commander in the Second World War, once wrote, I would name Sir John Monash as the greatest and best general on the Western Front in Europe. With that said, I commend this motion to the House.